Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Maybe you could kick off with an introduction to this very powerful, if, if hard to watch, documentary Retrograde. What can audiences expect when they watch it? So Retrograde is a, is a portrait of the last final sort of nine months uh, of the war in Afghanistan, seen through the eyes of uh, both Afghan and U.S. military, and then ultimately the final moments at the airport uh, as the U.S. Uh, pulled out. And what was the genesis of this project? At what point did you decide to take this as, as your next subject for a documentary? And, and over what kind of period were, were you actually there filming? So it actually began sort of five years ago um, with this almost like cliched idea of, you know, why do we fight wars? And I began sort of exploring that through different communities within the U.S. military. Uh, eventually got connected with the U.S. Army Green Berets, a special forces unit within the U.S. Army. And, you know, it took years to get permission from the Pentagon, from the highest levels of military and government. And then by that, by the time that happened, it was like, oh, actually, we can maybe tell this portrait of the end of the, the war, the end of the longest war in U.S. history. Um, and then the COVID happened and it just kept getting delayed and delayed. And so we ended up being on the last uh, U.S. deployment to Afghanistan. Uh, and yeah, that's how it all began. But then, you know, like almost every film that I've made, it began as one thing and then ended up as something completely different. Mm. And I did, watching it, I was just saying actually um, uh, to the PR agent that, um, you know, you're watching it and you feel, you know, going on this journey and kind of the hopelessness. And so I can't even imagine what it was being like there in person, you know. So what was that experience like for you going through it as, as an individual as, a, as well as a filmmaker? It was definitely the hardest film that I've ever made uh, by far, sort of physically, emotionally, logistically. Um, you know, there's plenty of moments in the film that were, you know, absolutely terrifying, being in a Black Hawk helicopter flying with the Afghan army as the Taliban was shooting rockets at us, um, you know, multiple moments on the front lines, um, a moment in the car when uh, we were with General Sadat, an Afghan general that is sort of the the protagonist in the film, who's in, in charge of all southern Afghanistan, trying to hold this country together, um, constantly under threat. Um, Taliban was sending suicide bombers to try to attack, you know, his convoy that we were filming in, you know, multiple times. So, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, really frightening moments. But for me, you know, that's not, I don't get excited by those things. Like, you know, that's not why I do this. It's always about the story. And I felt this deep need to sort of humanize this issue, uh, to take this issue, you know, the war in Afghanistan, which obviously been written about, talked about, you know, thousands of news stories about it over the decades. Um, but try to put a human face to it, try to humanize it, uh, and, and especially this final chapter. Mm -hmm. I think that's the that thing that's really striking about it, because even when you have their like Biden's words um, and, you know, presidents before him, you know, talking a lot about kind of the cost, you know, to American society of having such a huge presence in Afghanistan. And so when you hear it from that perspective, it kind of makes sense. You know, why, why do we have boots on the ground? Why are we losing lives? But then it just flips entirely when you're there. Um, in that room, you know, with both the, the American and Afghan soldiers and that, you know, the look in their eyes is almost pleading them to stay. Um, so was that really important to kind of show the sort of reality behind those headlines, behind those decisions that are made at kind of this high political level? Of course. I mean, you know, we all... these conflicts feel so far away and so distant. And as human beings, you know, our instinct is to disengage. You know, when you hear sad news or hear stories about famine or war or suffering, you know, we, human beings don't want to hear that. Um, and so I think, you know, my goal is to try to create this empathetic connection between the audience and these conflicts that feel so far away, but, but really aren't, and make you feel like, 
what would you do if you're in that situation? What would you do if you're General Sadat uh, making these impossible decisions, um, risking his men's, the lives of his men uh, in this final battle against the Taliban? What would you do um, you know, if your family was in danger and you're trying to flee Afghanistan in those final moments at the airport? What if that was your cousin or your mother or your sister? Um, and so that's why, you know, I shoot in a very intimate way. There's like really long close-ups. Like the, the, the attempt is to really put you in those situations um, in a way that, you know, news articles um, or stats or, you know, headlines don't or can't. That's the power of documentary. The power of documentary to me is is both to put you in those places, but also to to you know generate conversation and, and obviously elicit an emotional response. And one particular thing as well that stood out to me is kind of there's a real affection and the way you kind of portray the American soldiers, but it seems to kind of fly in the face of, of logic in in the sense that they, you know they really had a loyalty to want to remain there and, and help their kind of their Afghan um uh you know counterparts yet they just you know left so quickly destroyed everything left them with almost no um resources or ammunition um so you know maybe from your perspective but also you know I guess the film's perspective what, what kind of judgment do you think this should be made I guess this some of it's out of their hands, but then also as them them as individuals. Yeah, I mean, I don't go into these films with sort of a preordained notion of who people are, what organizations are, you know, individuals are individuals. And and, and I think the, um, I think one of the beautiful things about the film is that you, you know, you, you empathize with, with almost every party involved in this story. And um, while you might have feelings about war or war in general or the war in Afghanistan, you know, the actual individual people that are there, you know, they had deep bonds uh, on, on the USA, the deep bonds with their Afghan counterparts. You know, they had been fighting alongside them for in some cases, decades, in some cases, months, in some cases, years. Uh, they'd lost many friends there over the years. Um, and, and so that decision to leave, that decision to pull out um, felt like abandoning Mm-hmm. your friends abandoning your partners that you that you worked with for, for many years and so i think it was yeah profoundly impacted them and, and they were quite upset about it um and obviously you know there's a scene in the movie where they're saying goodbye they're sitting around in a, in a group um breaking the news that they're leaving you know this is this sort of like really tragic scene of, of of you know these these two entities these two groups um separating and then you know obviously the the term retrograde is a term a military term for leaving a war zone a term that i didn't know before making this film to know how it happened i mean the, you know the images of men with sledgehammers breaking computers um you know blowing up ammunition it's it sort of it was surreal to see um that process of, of leaving while orderly it felt um yeah, I just felt like what a waste this has all been. I think that's that's the point, isn't it? Because it's not as simple, that's what makes you realize it's not as simple as, okay, I think we've invested enough time and money drawing a line in the sand, that's the end. Because of course everything is more complex than that. And you could argue, well, this was all of you know the West's creation, the issue that, that that's there. Um, so it's kind of, you know, just throwing a spotlight on all those those points. And did you feel like some people should have stayed? Did you feel like a different decision should have been made? I'm not here to, uh, you know, the film is not an attempt to analyze who did what, right or wrong, when, how. Um, you know, there's plenty of smarter people than me that 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 write about that and talk about that. Um, it's supremely complicated, you know, and and that's that's a difficult thing about foreign policy, and that's a different difficult thing about wars is it's never black and white. And um, but at the end of the day, the people who are most affected by these war zones are the everyday civilians in the countries that we're fighting in, and so. 
the final act of the film, you know, at the airport in August of 2021, um, as you know, there's the mass evacuation and, and, and before the U.S. pulls out, you know, that allowed us to sort of open up the aperture of the film to show all the civilians that the Green Braves and that General Sadat and his men had been fighting for that at that point in the filming process that were very distant. And so it really just humanized the this story in, in a way that I think was really important. And, you know, again, there that's the tragedy of war that these decisions are made by people in white houses very far away. Um, I don't know the color of the house here in, in the UK, but um, you know, but they have profound impacts obviously uh, on millions of people in, in a far away distant country. And, you know, it was important to highlight and show those, the, the, the impact on those people at the, at the very end. Mm. And General Sadat himself as kind of a figure and, and a subject in the film, um, you know, whatever seems to situation he's in, he always comes across as calm, respectful, and yeah, and, and the collaboration between between his side and, and the American side. I th yeah, I think we don't see that enough, or you don't see that on film. And I also read that someone had made like a, a parallel between him and the Ukrainian president, who almost in the face of you know, such adversity seems to kind of keep their composure. And I guess you could make parallels with the Ukrainian war as well, that that, that sense of helplessness and, you know, outsiders not being able to help that much in a very tangible way. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the narrative in retrograde is, is a man who metaphorically had every neon sign saying, stop. You know, this is your country is falling apart. Give up, surrender, um, and he failed to do that. He, he had he had this unwavering belief in himself and his men that maybe just maybe if they held on to Helmand, Lashkar, southern Afghanistan, that that the country would hold together all the way to the very end, um, perhaps to a fault. Um, and that's that's part of the the tension of the film is that that as everything is crumbling around him, he fails to to sort of believe that that's actually the fate um, of of him and his men, and and he fights to the very end. And um, just coming to this way with the way the the film kind of looks, I mean, some shots almost look like they would have been created as if for for a fiction film. Um, what's your approach in that sense and, you know, managing to put it together despite its, you know, subject matter in, in kind of a beautifully cinematic way? I, I thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, I mean, I, the look and feel of these films really matters to me. The craft of documentaries matters to me. You know, I, I having made a narrative film as, as well, and hopefully we'll keep moving back and forth in these different spaces. You know, I love pushing the boundaries of what documentaries can be. They can be as exciting as any narrative film. They can have characters that pop up the screen like a narrative film. They can feel big and look big and look good. And even if you're in a war zone, it doesn't mean like your you know, camera needs to be shaky. And, you know, there's nothing against that. But like, you know, I care a lot about how it looks and feels. Um, so, yeah, that's, I think it's, it's something that's, that's really important to me. Um, it was funny that at a film festival uh, a couple of weeks ago, somebody asked me um, what it was like to uh, work with actors uh, in in retrograde, which which I I I guess I took as a compliment. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you made it look too. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I guess reality sometimes in fiction they they, they blur and they they didn't see the distinction there. Yeah, I don't I don't quite know what the statement what the what the takeaway there is. Maybe there's too much reality TV and and people. Yeah, I don't know. And what do you hope ultimately people will take away from watching your film? And I guess empathy empathy is a big one. Yeah, I think I want people to feel. I want people to care. I think the the war and the Ukraine obviously has usurped a lot of the news energy over the past couple months. You know, obviously incredibly important, and and 
you know, one of the most important news stories of our lifetime for sure. Um, but I feel like people have forgotten about Afghanistan and among many, 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 many things, I hope the film, um, at the very least sort of reinstates a conversation about, uh, this country that we left behind. And, you know, there's still thousands and thousands and thousands of, um, Afghan, uh, partner forces, you know, Afghan allies that we've worked with both the Brits and the Americans, um, that are, you know, in danger, that are, you know, living in hiding, that are being threatened. Some of them are still being killed. Um, so, you know, I think, I also hope that, you know, we can help get out the people who remain in danger. Um, uh, so that's, yeah. But I mean, I think on just sort of a larger level, I, yeah, I want to just generate conversation and have people talk about this um, and, and feel. And I guess it calls into question that, 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 that broader principle of can we ever escape war? You know, even if you're anti-war and you know, definitely there's elements of that in this film, but is it sometimes a necessary evil to keep the world secure, to protect um, people from, you know, the villains that, that are out there or um, antagonistic forces? It, it, it's, a, it's a hard question. I think even if you're the, you know, the most um, pacifist person, to, to completely say, you know, to, to avoid war completely? I'm definitely not smart enough to answer that question. I think the, but the, 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 that is the, a reason why, the, you know, I really try hard to keep politics out of my films. You know, our world is divided enough. Uh, our world is fractured enough, enough. We live in silos. We live in echo chambers. And that just we love to reinforce our own beliefs and a lot of documentaries do that too. You know, they, they preach to the choir, they, they sort of fulfill an essay that the filmmaker has, which is totally fine. But to me, one of the powers of film and the powers of documentary is to bring people together and only maybe by doing so only by bringing people from the far right and the left and the center to, to see something, to be able to discuss and argue and debate. Um, can we maybe, have make sort of rational you know conclusions going forward um and it's really you know afghanistan is a particularly interesting prism to view politics because it doesn't break down neatly at least in the u.s on the left and the right you know there's people on the left that think we should have stayed you know that we abandoned this country that we abandoned our allies that you know and obviously uh you know girls can't go to school women can't um, go outside with their head covered and we're back to where we were 20 years ago. So all the human rights gains that were made over the past 20 years are, have been revoked by the Taliban. Um, on the other side, you know, thousands of lives were lost, trillions of dollars were spent, you know, so like it, it really doesn't break down neatly ac across the left and the right. And that's, that's why war is messy, war is complicated, and there are no easy answers. Um, but but hopefully by presenting in a way that allows people from all political persuasions um, to to watch the film, it can it can generate you know a rational conversation. Was there a particular moment for you in in the making of it or watching it back that really was the hardest bit or, or the most challenging bit? I mean I think I've made a lot of difficult films over my career and you know cartels in Mexico, ISIS in Syria. You know, I see you in COVID for four months, um, human trafficking, human smuggling, heroin epidemic. I mean, I made a lot of pretty difficult films. Um, and I've certainly cried a lot over the years making these films. Never in my life have I ever cried while filming. Um, and that scene at the Abbey Gate in the final days at the airport in Kabul as thousands of Afghan civilians were pushed together in a sewage ditch four feet deep, desperately trying to flee, as 18-year-old Marines were making these impossible Sophie's Choice decisions on who to let in and who to let not let in, as the Taliban was 100 yards away at gunpoint watching us, as ISIS was circling the hills with suicide vests on waiting to attack 
which happened 12 hours later in that exact spot that I was filming in, you know, just had tears streaming down my face and, and, uh, kept wiping my lens down and just all I could think about is, you know, what have we done? No, I mean, well, <laughs> um, but is that the power and the importance of, of documentary making bearing witness and, and, you know, hopefully the more people are aware, the more people talk about things, the more we try and improve things, you prevent these horrendous things from happening. I'd like to think that 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 I have that power, that the film has that power. I don't. That's something I struggle with. If I'm totally honest, I mean, I, I made a, a feature film, a narrative film called "The Private War" about you know a journalist from here, Marie Colvin, who was killed in Syria, um, played by Rosamund Pike, and you know, in some ways, that was the most personal film that I made, even though it was a you know f- feature film with actors. Is you know, Marie constantly struggled with with do her words matter do her stories matter doesn't make a difference um obviously on some level she thought it did otherwise she wouldn't have continued to do it and obviously i in some level think it does although uh, otherwise i wouldn't continue to do what i do but it's definitely something i think about and i struggle because it's again going back to what we were talking about earlier people just want to live their lives they don't want to engage with with tough issues and um and what is making a difference what is making a difference you know is 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 changing someone's perception of the world i think that's making a difference you know making a difference comes in many shapes and sizes um is getting someone to feel or care a little bit more is that making a difference i think so i hope so so it's just it's about i don't know i guess in my old age of 39 I sort of manage my expectations of what making difference is. And just, I think my job is to create a film, create a document of a moment in history, um, introduce you to characters and people that you care for, that you feel for in a place where the stakes are really high. And again, maybe you'll just, you'll, you'll feel a little bit more. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I think I've got over my time, but just very quickly, do you know what you're going to work on next? You're saying maybe you'll do a fiction film again or another documentary? My mom is waiting for the for the rom-com. I'm not sure uh, that's happening anytime soon. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, I, I'm, making, I'm oh, actually... making a comeback. Who knows? You could get into that space. <laughs> what? Rom-coms seem to be making a comeback, like old school rom-coms, so. I don't think anyone would want to make, I feel like I would just twist it into some dark tale and it would be, it would go from like a rom-com to a tragic com or whatever that's called. Um, I, I'm, I'm editing a film about uh, the musician John Baptiste. Uh, mm. I spent the past sort of year with him um, and editing that now and then I have a, a number of other projects lined up next year, so. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us um, and can't wait for everyone else to you know, have a chance to see this really incredible documentary. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.